A report has just emerged saying that the Audi e-tron is selling for half price discounts on nearly new models in the United States, making it cheaper than a Chevy Bolt, the Bolt EV, right? Should you get an e-tron instead of a Bolt EV? Probably. Plus, keep in mind, it does actually now qualify for some EV incentives in the United States for secondhand electric cars. But I'm talking, I mean, this is a fairly new car. Why are they selling this cheap? Well, interestingly, I also reported on this phenomenon in China, but there in China, this is, well, the price for new models that have been discounted by up to 50% as well. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I've made a few videos on the Audi e-tron that have infuriated a lot of people. They believe that I'm being unfair to Audi, and obviously I'm going to guess they're probably fans of Audi But to say that. The Audi e-tron is just an underwhelming car. I mean, personally, if it were up to me, I'd prefer to buy the Volkswagen ID4. It's just much better value. It's a pretty similar car, to be honest, both on the MEB platform. The Audi e-tron specs, it just, they're just not, they're not luxurious. It's not really premium for the price that you're paying. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the styling of Audi's cars. I think most, not all of them, but many of them look fantastic. But when it comes to actual substance, they're lacking. And I believe that's one of the reasons why resale value has plummeted on Audi's electric cars. Now, one of the cool things about the Audi e-tron, right, is it actually looks like, looks very similar to a gasoline powered vehicle, just a bit more elegant, a bit nicer. However, whilst this does attract a lot of people who don't like the look of say a Tesla, for example, um, I think a lot of people realize once they buy them that the actual ownership experience is not quite what they imagined it to be, especially when the, for example, charging experience lets you down. When it was new, the 2019 Audi e-tron Premium Plus started at 76,000 US dollars. The higher end or the more expensive prestige version cost 83,000 US dollars. And the e-tron was priced similarly to cars like the Jaguar I-Pace and the Tesla Model X. Now, obviously the Jaguar I-Pace is almost dead. It's selling in minuscule numbers worldwide. Um, it's only being produced today for one key reason, and that is that Jaguar signed a contract with Magna Steer in Austria that they would have to keep selling the car until 2026. So even though Jaguar was clearly losing money on the on the iPace and barely selling any, making it a bit of an embarrassment, are they still selling it? And it's very, very old and dated now. So for that price, you know, 77 to $87,000, you can get some really good electric cars today. E-tron probably isn't one of them. Today, you can actually get used e-trons for a similar price to a Chevy Bolt EUV. It was pointed out on several websites that Across the United States, there's a surprising number of Audi e-trons selling for between thirty dollars to $35,000. Some have lost more than 60% of their value. And this is very common. This is not actually common for just Audis. It's actually common for, for luxury priced cars worldwide. Resale values often drop really, really fast. So I don't think this is just about the substance of this EV being poor. I think it's more that uh, luxury cars do fall in price pretty significantly. So we've seen the resale values of Tesla vehicles come down this year, but none of them kind of have come down anywhere near this much because I believe they're probably simply a better daily product to use. So for example, a lot of people get sucked into something that's luxurious uh, and it looks cool. It's got a cool brand to it and they actually find out the substance isn't that great. And I think often then, no matter what market you're in, prices on the secondhand market will drop pretty significantly. While the 2019 Audi e-tron wasn't really that competitive at launch, it is 193 inches long, and that means it's six inches longer than the Tesla Model Y, so it's actually a pretty big car. That said, uh, boot size is very small, and I don't really know why. For some reason, the packaging for the car, very unusual. I watched a video on CarWow when this came out where they showed the boot space of all these different EVs, and the e-tron's boot was about half the size of a Tesla Model Y, even though it's six inches longer. Just, I couldn't work out how that's the case. However, thanks to a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack, it gets 
an incredible range of approximately 300 miles. Not really incredible for that size battery pack, is it? But anyway, it's a fair bit of range. It's not too bad. However, that range is impacted in the real world, and it's probably going to be a lot less than that from individual tests that I've seen. Why? Well, it's extremely heavy. I mean, it weighs 5,760 pounds. 5,760 pounds for a car that, well, really isn't that big. Now, why is it so heavy in comparison to, well, yeah, okay, the Tesla Model Y? Well, one of the reasons is there's no gigacasting. There's no structural battery packs. It's not really a ground up EV. It's sort of, you know, that point in which automakers stumble and say, they, well, we're gonna build a new type of car, but why don't we just convert our existing vehicles? And that's what this pretty much is. That said, it does have some other features. It's got 402 horsepower. It can tow 4,000 pounds. It's pretty good for an EV and it goes pretty quick. It'll do around about five seconds from zero to 62 miles an hour. But one feature I think makes this not such a great proposition in day-to-day -day driving. And that is the charging speed. Now, yes, charging speed isn't terrible. It's 150 kilowatt charging speed maximum. But the thing is, without having access to Tesla's charging network, the experience for most owners hasn't been that great when it comes to charging. That said, apparently, because there's a lot of cobalt in this battery pack, it can actually sustain charging rates that are higher than what you'd expect. Now it's said that it can sustain that 150 kilowatt charging speed for above a 70% state of charge. Now that's not actually true. I've seen some charging tests of this in the real world and actually it does charge faster than other 150 kilowatt charging speed cars, but it, no car in the world maintains a consistent peak charging rate. It hits peak charging for maybe a minute or two and then drops down a little bit. That's pretty normal for all electric cars. That said, whilst it doesn't have a real world range of 300 miles, it's still got more range than a Chevy Equinox, right? Um, so is it worth considering getting one? Well, what about warranty? Well, depends on where you bought it from, but I'm gonna guess there's a good chance that buying one of these used, it probably will have very little warranty left on it, possibly none. So that is obviously a risk you need to consider because it doesn't have a lithium ion phosphate battery, which of course have far less problems and will last longer than the battery chemistry that Audi use in these cars. It's not just confined to Audi, by the way, the Equinox EV does have a similar battery chemistry as well. But of course, if you bought that new, you would have a warranty. Now, what about the actual features? Yeah, it's here where the e-tron definitely is a much better car than the Equinox SUV. For example, it's got a Bang & Olufsen stereo. It's got ventilated front seats, adaptive cruise control, rear seat climate controls, a 3D vehicle camera, opening sunroof, and well, it's also got massaging seats if you get the premium version, soft closed doors, heads up display, and a fragrance system, which is nice if someone farts, for example. There's one thing worth considering though, and this is what Inside EVs actually said. They said that there has apparently been a lot of issues with people having to return their cars to dealerships. Apparently, because it's Audi's first EV, it wasn't as reliable as Audi vehicles normally are. And that could be an issue, especially if it's outside of warranty. You may have to pay for some of those costs to fix things yourself, depending on your dealership or, you know, those sorts of things. Now that said, it's a luxury car. And the truth is, when you're getting these things fixed, if it's not under warranty, that could cost you a lot of money. I don't think this is a risk personally that I'd be willing to take. But, I mean, some people will. At the prices they're selling for, they're incredibly cheap and maybe it's worth taking a hit. And, you know, if you've got to fix a few things here and there, it's not so bad. Speaking of warranty, how long is the warranty? Well, it's a four years and 50,000 mile warranty. So if you can find one of these with say um, 25,000 miles left on the warranty, that might not be so bad. But to be honest, I'm really baffled. The fact that Audi have a 50,000 mile warranty on a, what is a new car? Doesn't show a lot of confidence to me. I think if you're gonna bring a new car to market, you need to have a minimum of 100,000 mile warranty like most other brands do. In fact, a lot of brands have more than 100,000 mile warranty. So when you think about this car in terms of comparing the price to say a General Motors Bolt EUV, uh, obviously that's a much smaller vehicle. And it has theoretically a small, much smaller battery pack. It's got much less luxury features. But to be honest, I'd probably still go for the Bolt EUV. It qualifies for the full $7,500 tax credit. You get a full warranty. 
you're not buying possibly what has been someone else's problem. Now, why are people dumping them on the market for so cheap? 50% or more, even up to 60% discount on some of these vehicles that I've seen for sale. Well, it's probably worth asking the question. No one really knows, but it does look like they've had a fair few issues. Maybe it's not worth you taking on that risk, but I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this? Is this something you'd consider at these prices? Because they are very, very cheap. Let me know in the comments below and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.